first some few words about myself. Uh, my name is Markus Becker. I'm the technical director of NPI and sitting aside of me is Paul Sinclair, our marketing specialist. He will assist me during that meeting technical advice and also answering your questions. The content of today's webinar are we are starting with a overview on the speech intelligibility, some basics. Then we will introduce you to the uh, procedure of measuring steeper in a crowded place. We have prepared a small practical presentation and then uh, coming back to the latest edition of the steeper standard uh, which has some impact on the measurement. We have a new reporting tool. By the way, this is available free of charge from our website that we're going to show you as well. And at latest in the end, answering your questions and providing some auxiliary information. The duration of this webinar is about 30 minutes. So hope that we will not bore you too much. Let's start with the basic information on speech intelligibility. I guess you know STI or STEPA being a special standard for this STI measurement is a standardized measured me method to determine the intelligibility. So the amount how good a spoken announcement can be understood by human listeners. And actually STEPA, the way of measuring STI through STEPA is the most widespread method in the world. How does it work? We are using a test signal that is basically a modulated noise signal. We replay this test signal through the PA system and we measure it with our device and determine how well these modulations have come through this whole channel. So if there is some noise or some reverberation or distortion, this will affect these modulation and that will be detected by the test instrument and by comparing the original signal with the received signal, we can determine the modulation transfer function, which is a, another word for the STI. So the result, just one more information, each measurement that is standardized takes 15 seconds. And the result is plotted on a scale from zero to one. Zero would mean not understandable at all, whereas one means perfect understandability. There are some special requirements if you want to measure steeper in an actual location. One of them is if you are in a very large location, you have to repeat the measurement either each six meters or each 12 meters, depending on the size. And you have, of course, also to make sure that you measure the steeper at reasonable places, at places where usually people would be standing and listening to the announcement to get a clear picture and a uh, total overall picture of the site, of the intelligibility of your location. So in most cases, uh, measuring steeper is quite simple. You switch on your test signal, you stand to the on the place where you want to determine the STI and you execute the measurement. Unfortunately, sometimes there are some special challenges uh, to overcome. If you look, for instance, at this picture, which would be a large exhibition hall, imagine now you standing in the middle of this crowd and trying to make a steeper measurement. So this would mean you had to replay the test signal through the PA system again and again and again. I guess the people would get annoyed pretty quickly. So you understand, of course, that this is not a good solution. Secondly, uh, you have to be aware that the noise coming from these people would heavily affect your steeper result. So the STI measurement is quite sensitive to ambient noise, especially to impulsive noise. This would mean it, the noise would compromise the accuracy of your steeper measurement. And for that reason, you cannot execute this measurement in this situation as it is shown with all the people standing in there. On the other side, you want to reflect the impact of this crowd as well. You want to know how good will be a spoken announcement if the crowd is there, if they are talking to each other. So we somehow have to solve that. And the solution is quite simple because it's a two-step process. First, you go into this room and you measure just the ambient noise. The noise coming from the crowd on, if you want at several places for a certain while, not too long. So you have this ambient noise recording. And then you come back 
to this place when it is deserted, for instance, during nighttime. And then you have the time to execute your steeper measurement. And the final step is automat automatically executed by the instrument. We're going to show you that um, by combining these two results. So combining the noise, the recorded noise level, with the steeper results into the true STI uh, data. And just to visualize to you the impact of the people in a room, how, uh, how is that uh, working? Uh, just imagine you have a PA system that is uh, replaying the spoken announcement. You have maybe some distortions. You have, of course, a sound pressure level. We have a frequency response from the room or from the PA system. And you have some, for instance, reverberation in your room. Now, if there are people inside, you have definitely an impact on the reverberation time people, persons are damping noise, and secondly, they are creating noise by themselves. So this all adds up to the overall intelligibility, and for this reason, you have to make sure that your test considers both the STI measurement and the noise from the people. So the great news is that the XL2 supports a very handsome, a very easy to operate uh, process to combine these two measurements just at once. As said before, you first go into the room and the people are there and you just make a noise measurement, a measurement of the sound pressure level. We're going to show you that later. Then you come back when the place is deserted, no people inside except you, and you make your steeper test. Now the good thing is, because the instrument, the XL2, immediately combines these two results into the overall result, you have the chance to use this feedback to optimize your PEA system on the spot, immediately. So if you realize the STI is not good enough, maybe because of distortions, maybe because the sound pressure level of the PA system is too low, you can immediately go to the desk and change it, amend it, optimize it, and retest. And you get immediately the new, the amended results until you know we are now on the good side. So now we are uh, ready to, for the presentation. We have a MR Pro as the sound source, uh, replaying the sound through a speaker and measuring that with an XL2. Our goal is to achieve a STI of 0.6 or better. Now I'm going to switch over to the XL2 projector, which is a nice software which you can also download for free from um, our website. Um, what we have added in this new XL2 software is a menu entry below here, below the STI screen, and uh, this is CORR, which stands for correction. And this is a screen which allows you to record the ambient noise. And that's what we're going to do first. So we enter the screen. We decide how long the measurement shall, shall last. That's up to us. It's not standardized. Let's say we go for 10 seconds. And then we start the measurement. On the bar, you can see the progress of the measurement, and maybe you heard a little bit of it. Uh, we are just using a kind of a standardized ambient noise for this measurement. Now we see the result for the octave bands on the right-hand side. We save this data. We could repeat it if we wanted. We save it and use it for the next stage for the STI measurement. So we switch over to the STI screen, and we start with the steeper measurement itself. Now, of course, we are using this deeper test signal. Again, we have this bar on top which shows us the progress of the measurement. We already see the result, but we wait until it's finished. Okay, finished. Um, the big result, the big letters here in the middle, are now representing the combined result. So the noise added to the steeper result. 
uh, in the line below, this would be the pure STI measurement without the noise correction. So here you already see the difference. You see that this ambient noise apparently compromises the STI data. One more information, by the way, you see over here, the edition 4.0 that refers to the steeper standard. And if you like, you can execute even measurements according to the old editions. Um, depending whether you have to do it or not, of course, we recommend always to use the latest one, the 4.0. Now, remember we said that uh, we want to go for the 0.6 STI. We did not reach it. We have to do something about it. So we have to amend our PA system. In this case, we're going to increase the sound pressure level of the steeper of the PA system and measure steeper once again. So the measurement has started. We already see, uh, by the way, down here at the LAQ line, we see that there's an hour higher LAQ as before, and also the STI result, the combined STI result is higher than before. It's behind, be, uh, beyond the 0 0.6 limit, so we are quite happy with that. Uh, maybe you have noticed a surprising fact, and that is that the pure STI, the uncorrected STI, uncorrected meaning without the ambient noise added, is now lower than before. Um, I will come back to this fact and uh, explain it to you at a later time. The only thing I would like to do now is to verify my STI measurement we are, because we are pretty close to the 0 0.6 limit. So let's do an averaging of three steeper measurements to be on the very safe side. So we go to the AVR for, to the average screen of our XL2. You see that was, you see already the result of the first cycle and we just add two more cycles uh, to that steeper measurement. So we can already say it's coming very close to the previous result, which is a good sign. That was the second cycle. We just add another one. This is, by the way, also a recommendation of the steeper standard. If you are very close to your target limit, uh, make sure that you're on the safe side by measuring it at least three times and taking the average of it. So we have concluded that. We have now down here the overall average of the STI, which is clearly below, uh, higher than the 0 0.6. We have the steeper deviation, which is very low. Uh, 0 0.03 would be the limit that we have to be better off, and we are below that, so this is good. And just keep in mind this capital letter D. I will come back to that later again. At this time, we finish our measurement. We save it on the instrument uh, for later processing. i come back to that as, as well. Good. So let's switch over to our presentation and spend some words on this steeper standard, the IEC 60268, with the latest edition. Uh, you remember when I said that there is this funny effect of the pure STI being lower at higher sound pressure level than before. Why is that? Uh, the reason is quite simple. Um, you know, I guess you all know that the perception of our human ear is compromised both at the lower and at higher sound pressure levels. If we're talking about lower sound pressure levels, here we have the hearing threshold which compromises our perception. And this is reflected in the standard by applying, well, let's call it a negative offset from the perfect or from the true STI result, a negative offset to get the displayed result, the result that is actually accepted, just reflecting this hearing threshold of our human ear. And a similar thing happens at higher sound pressure levels. Here we are not talking about hearing threshold, but about masking effects. Now, the Standard 2.0 uh, did not reflect that, so it was just a straight line saying the louder you would replay your steepest test signal, the better would be the steepest result, or it would stay at, at a high level. But in fact, we humans would not understand it anymore because it was becoming too loud. 
So in condition 3, which is the yellow curve, there was this negative offset also introduced at high sound pressure levels. Unfortunately, in a stepwise fu uh, function, and just imagine here if you have a sound pressure level jumping around this value here, you have changing steeper results all the time. For that reason, in the latest standard, there was a smooth curve introduced, which is already implemented on the XL2 and which now reflects the human perception very nicely. Then the other hint I wanted to give you about this capital letter D. Uh, I would like actually to start with this column of this table. This table is a kind of a recommendation table for you. It's not uh, written in law, but let's say you have the task to verify the steeper in a sp certain place and to make sure that the steeper STI, the intelligibility, has a reasonable value. So let's say you have, we just here in Liechtenstein, we had the election of the parliament last weekend. So you have the task to make sure that in the parliament, the speech intelligibility is good enough so that everybody understands what the prime minister is just saying. So you would say, okay, parliament here should be quite well. At least A, B, C, C should be feasible. So we have to have a steeper in this range. This is the way how you understand this table. It's a recommendation and it's kind of reflecting typical locations, of course, combined with the complexity of the message with the reachable steeper value in figures or here in this uh, ranking system with capital letters. This is the reason or this is the background of this uh, qualification bands or qualification table. Um, I said something about optimizing a PA system. How do you do that? Of course, you need some tools for that. You need equipment that allows you to determine the distortions of a PA system to measure maybe the reverberation time and of course also to get the steeper test signal into the PA system either electronically or acoustically. For all these tasks, we have a bunch of nice little tools which you can uh, use for these purposes. And we also have some application hints, some notes on best practices, how to do this deeper measurement. Please visit our website uh, where you will find these application notes for download. And of course, also the other tools that I mentioned are noted and described in there. So one new tool that we have also just launched and it's available free of charge is the reporting tool. Maybe you want to print out your results as a proof for your uh, the person who has charged you with this or uh, gave, given you the, the um, job to do the, to measure the step steeper. And we're going to show you this uh, steeper tool as well. I'm just switching over now to this Excel sheet. Uh, I have my Excel tool from the presentation before already connected. And I just say I want to get the data from my device. So this pop-up appears asking me whether I'm sure whether I want to load all these files from this Excel tool. I say yes, of course. And then it gives me the feedback. Yes, one STI measurement position and one noise measurement has been added from the Excel tool. I confirm, okay. By the way, I see it here as well. One STI measurement and one noise measurement. I could uh, change the language of this spreadsheet. I could enter some um, naming to the uh, project. I could add some comments. And here, this is the more important part. I see the results, the LAQ from the steeper measurement, the steeper measured values. Same goes for the noise. And down here in this uh, bottom line, I see the combined result noise plus STI from my three measurements. And here's the average. I can also take a look at the data in more detail. I will not say too much about it because this goes quite clear deep into this deeper measurement. But if you are interested, you can read this information also in our application note. And here also the noise results for the octave bands are plotted in this table. And of course, we have a summary report, which you could, for instance, use for printout. You could even replace our logo by your one so that it looks nicer 
and here you have the measured average result plus this qualification character. Well, we're coming close to the end of our presentation. Uh, we have a quite nice network all over the world uh, with our agencies taking care of you if you have some specific questions. I have only plotted here our direct subsidiaries. As you know, we have lots of uh, independent um, representatives in Southeast Asia, in Oceania, in the Mideast, wherever you want. Just look at our website. You're going to find uh, this information over there. And um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, I just take a look on the question screen. I see that Paul has answered some questions. Uh, yeah, there's one which I would like to make just public to the audience. Uh, one question was um, when we measure the noise in a large location, could we do that at several places and combine that? And the answer is yes, of course. You're not restricted to just one measurement. You can uh, repeat the measurement at several places and um, combine them together. This will be all done by the instrument itself automatically. Then there is another question what I just see. The minimum distance between the speaker and the microphone during the measurement this is a good question. Um, I'm not sure whether the standard says anything concretely about it, but the answer is quite simple. Don't go too close to the speaker because um, this will, of course, give you a very good steeper result if you are rather close to the to the speaker of the PA system. Um, the standard says that you should be located in a place where the typical audience is, is, is standing. So maybe there is one or two persons close to the speaker in a real situation, but you should rather look for the average for the typical um, audience person or uh, yeah, person standing in the in the room. Okay, so um, final statement, we have recorded this webinar. It will be made available for you to for download in, the, in a few days' time. Please uh, give us this time because we have to compile it in a better way. And you see down here the link on our website where you can find this webinar for streaming or download. Uh, so if you want to listen to it once again. And far, last but not least, if you have additional questions, or suggestions, please um, let us know. We will be pleased to answer them. Just send them an email. Yeah, yeah and, and by the way, we, you will, we will also we inform you about this download by email to remind you that now it's available. There's just one more uh, question. Whether there's any difference between outdoor and indoor measurements of steeper. Um, Let's say this way, there is, from the point of measuring, there is no difference. Because you have the test signal, you replay it, and you just measure it. Um, on the effect of the, um, on, on the, on, on the aspect what you can change, there is, of course, a difference. Because indoor, you have mainly reverberations. And I was talking about amending the PA system to optimize the steeper. Um, this is one opportunity, of course. but if you are, let's say, in a place where there is very high reverberation, it will be very hard to get a good steeper. So maybe one of the measures you have to take indoor is to damp these reverberations. And outdoor, you, you're not coping with that problem. So there might be a, a clear difference between these two types of location regarding the optimization of your steeper. Regarding the measurement, there's almost no difference. Okay, so seems that we have uh, gone through all the topics of interest. Once again, thank you very much for your attention and uh, wishing you a very nice evening. And uh, 